Flores. He was fired last month after three years coaching the Miami Dolphins. His lawsuit claims the NFL has failed to create a fairer hiring process. Quote, nothing has changed. In fact, the racial discrimination has only been made worse by the NFL's disingenuous commitment to social equity. As of today, there are three head coaches of color, including one black man out of 32 in the league. That's down from eight in 2018. About 70 percent of the players are black. The NFL says in a statement, diversity is core to everything we do. And there are a few issues on which our clubs and our internal leadership team spend more time. We will defend against these claims which are without merit. Brian Flores is here with us right now with his attorneys, Doug Woodor and John Aleftarakis. Make sure I got that right. Hey, got For an interview, you'll see first on CBS Mornings. Good morning. Um, we appreciate you guys joining us. We Thank know that you guys did reach out to us yeah. last week, but I'm glad you guys are sitting down with us now. Brian, I'll start with you. Last week, you interviewed for the head coaching job for the New York Giants. What happened leading up to that interview? Uh, before we get into that, I just want to say thank you to, uh, you know, I've received a lot of uh, calls, emails, text messages uh, in support of what's going on. It's been a tough uh, 24 hours, I would say. Sure. Um, so to everyone who's uh, reached out, um, obviously family, and uh, I just want to say thank you. Of uh, course. I just want to say thank you. So last week, um, I interviewed for the Giants position. Um, I was set to interview on Thursday, the, the Monday prior. Uh, before, before I interviewed, I received a text message uh, from Bill Belichick saying congratulations on the Giants, basically, essentially a congratulations on the Giants job. Um, uh, there was a little bit of back and forth. Um, yeah, we have the text messages there on the screen. Yeah, there was okay. some back and forth and... Some confusion uh, because... Yeah. You haven't sat down with the Giants yet. I have not sat down with the Giants. There was some back and forth, and I, I just, uh, I asked him, is this, are you, are you talking to the right Brian? Mm. Um, and uh, as you, you've seen them through the text messages, he was actually, uh, uh, thought he was texting Brian Dayball. Who they ended up hiring. Yes, sir. So at that point, how did that make you feel, knowing that you were walking into an interview where a decision might have already been made? Uh, it was a range of emotions. Uh, humiliation, uh, uh, Disbelief, um, uh, anger. Um, you know, I've worked so hard to get to to, um, to where I am from a, uh, in football to become a head coach. Um, put 18 years in, in this league, and it was uh, uh, to 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 go on at what was going to be a what, what felt like or what was a sham interview. I was. Uh, I was hurt. And, but you uh, went knowing that you probably weren't going to get it. I why, did. why did you continue to go? Uh, I think uh, I, I, there's still hope. Maybe it's call it call it the audacity of hope. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was, you know, I have a belief that you know there's good in people. I, I just do. Um, we and, knew uh, he wasn't getting that job. At, on the day before that, that Giants interview, we, we reached out to you, CBS, to, yeah. to, both, to all of you, to, yeah. to start talking about doing this interview today because we knew he wasn't getting the job. We knew it was a setup. We knew they were just trying to comply with the Rooney rule. We started drafting the complaint, and, uh, and here we are. The Giants say they are pleased and confident in the hiring process. Uh, I get the sense from the lawsuit and from you right now that you had a feeling like, here we go again. This wasn't the first time you felt discriminated against in the league. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, I mean, I've... I mean, the, ruling, the Rooney Rule is in, intended to, uh, you know, give minorities an opportunity to sit down in front of uh, ownership. But I think what it's turned into is um, an instance where guys are just checking the box. Um, and that's been the case. I've been on some interviews in the past that, um, where that's, I've had that feeling. There's you know, always no way to, to, to know for sure, but, um, but you know. And I know, I know, I know I'm not alone there. You have to have the Rooney Rule. I think, I think. Not a, yeah. even that, even, isn't that a problem? What are we going to say? It's, 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 absolute, I'm sorry, it's absolutely a problem. And one of the things that we're doing to help effectuate this change is, you know, the Rooney Rule is tied to the assumption that presidents, owners are going to do the right thing, hire the best, most qualified candidate. Yeah. What we want to do is tie, you know, certain things to performance and action through this. But, but Brian, the reason I, 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 the timing is really important here because you're actually up for two additional NFL jobs right now. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. why, why did you do this knowing from your own statement that you may have sacrificed your future in the NFL and you're a young man? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, I let both the teams know that, you know, we were going to we we're going to file. But look, I love coaching. You know, I'm gifted to coach. I know that. Um, 
and the relationships I've built with players, coaches, support staff. Uh, I'm gifted to coach, and I love coaching, and I want to coach. Um, and I've heard this, from reliable sources you're a very good coach. Let the <laughs> no record doubt show. It. Always room for improvement, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I, I like to think that as well. Um, but this is bigger than coaching. Of course. Um, this is much bigger than coaching. Now, we'll get back to the lawsuit um, in regards to the Broncos and the Giants, but I want to talk about the Miami Dolphins for a second. Um, you make claims that you were offered $100,000 for each game this team lose um, subsequently uh, t to get a better draft pick. Um, kind of speak on that because you don't hear about that going on behind closed doors. I'm a former player. I know you as a coach. You want to win. I walk in that locker room. I want to win. I don't hear people from the front office and above making those type of decisions that can change the outcome of your coaching career. Uh, yeah, uh, look, this game's done a lot for me. Um, I grew up not far from here in the projects in, in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, I didn't grow up with a lot. And this game, you know, changed my life. Uh, so to attack the integrity of the game, that's, that's what I felt was happening in that instance, and um, I wouldn't stand for it. And that was Dolphins owner Stephen Ross? Yes. Yes. So, and you think it hurt your career? I, I, think it, I think it hurt my standing with, with, within the organization um, and ultimately was the reason why I was let go. Well, word on the street now, though, Brian, is that either you've torpedoed your career, that this is the craziest thing you could have done, or that it's very brave and very bold of you to do. How are you feeling? Are you at peace with your decision? And was this a very difficult decision for you to make to file a lawsuit before you have a job? Uh, uh, I understand the risks, and yes, it was a difficult decision, and I went back and forth. Um, and like I said, I, I, I'm, I love coaching. I do. Um, it's something that um, I'm passionate about. It brings me joy. Um, and I love helping young people reach their potential and become the best versions of themselves. I'm gifted to do that. Brian. Um, but this is bigger than, than that. I mean, can I just say, in 2022, the fact that we don't have one black owner, we only have one black head coach. That's actually what I want to talk you know, about. He, I mean, you know, really, Brian needs to be applauded for stepping forward to be the first person to really contest it. It's been talked about. Well, you've heard you know, the statement. But, that, but now NFL. he has stepped forward to so challenge it. You've heard the statement from the NFL in a statement, diversity is core to everything we do. There are a few issues on which our clubs and our inter in internal teams spend more time on. Yeah, but, they've acknowledged but, but, their problems. You know, the executives there have acknowledged their problems. Now they're, the PR team is trying to spin something, you know, they could take two different paths. They could, they could take the path of trying to defend and litigate, or we hope that they take the path of actually trying to correct things, to be an example, not only for the NFL, but for American society, to and lead by so example. When you talk about the owners, you know, you got 31 white billionaires, and then the Packers have a special situation. 70% about of the players are, are black. Uh, it, it, there's a power dynamic that's visible there. Yeah. In the lawsuit, there's this explosive line that the NFL is managed much like a plantation. That's a, a direct quote. Why did you decide to settle on that metaphor? Uh, can I, just, I think, I, I think, uh, look, we, we didn't hit, the, we didn't have to file a lawsuit for, for the world to know that there's a problem from a, from a hiring standpoint in regards to minority coaches in the National Football League. The numbers speak for themselves. Right. Uh, we filed the lawsuit um, so that we could create some change. Um, and that's important to me. I think we're at a fork in the road right now. You know, we're either going to keep it the way it is mm -hmm. or we're going to go in another direction and actually make some real change where um, we're actually changing the hearts and minds of those who make decisions to hire uh, head coaches, um, executives, et cetera. And I mean, that's where we got to get to. We got to change hearts Brian, and minds. Brian, I heard someone say, but don't companies or clubs have the right to hire the person they think is the best qualified for the job or the person they feel is right for the job? Whatever race they are. Whatever race they are, yes. They do. You know, uh, and, uh, and that's 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 very reasonable to me. But at the same time, uh, there are uh, I know a very uh, a lot of very capable coaches, executives, um, minorities, uh, coaches, executives who are minorities, um, and in a lot of cases are um, as qualified, um, more qualified, and quite frankly, better than, than, than their white counterparts. Then, then, yeah, but given, the difference not, not here, though, the is that they're not given an equal opportunity. Exactly. And, you know, when we talk about this fork in the road that the NFL has, and, Gail, you talked about the statement that they released denying and saying that they're going to defend what was absent from 
their response to this 60-page yeah. complaint with serious allegations from a decorated head coach is, how about we'll investigate? We're troubled by this. Yeah. We'll look into it. Immediate, you know, no denial disregard. and disregard and defend. Yeah. But I back mean, to the point about the companies have the right to hire who they think is best qualified. I, I, we all agree with that, but the difference here, if what you're saying is true and you seem to have receipts, they knew ahead of time that you weren't going to get the job. So okay. I'm thinking, why waste your time and theirs? And the word this minority is, is, it's loaded because it has different connotations. Yeah. We might be marginalized in certain areas, but our contributions to this game, both on the field and outside of the lines, are immense. Yeah. And when you have quality coaches that are available, that are gifted and can lead teams but not getting the opportunity, that's why you are standing for what you're standing for. Um, but I, I want you to have called, one last those word. Those are called facts. That's right. Yeah. One last thing, I'll let you say this, but you still want to coach in this league. I absolutely want to coach in this league, but I also know that this isn't, I'm not the only story here. Yeah. I'm not the only one with a story to You're tell. You're speaking up for decades I'm, of this I'm, going on this and is, hopefully stopping it from happening. Is, this is, you know, there are people who have come before me, and and and, and um, I know there are others who, who, have, who have similar stories, and... Um, it's hard to speak out. Um, it is, you know, yeah. you're giving up, you're making some sacrifices, but um, this is, again, this is bigger than football, this is bigger than coaching. Thank you.